Hi, Karen Nasland here with Nasland Consulting, and I want to welcome you to another Tips Tuesday. We're going to continue our conversations around change. And in the past sessions, I've talked and provided some definitions around what change is, what transition is, what the neutral zone is, according to William Bridges. And I also talked about endings and what you can do to help people through or your staff through endings. Today, I want to talk a bit more about the neutral zone and share with you a story that um, that actually involved uh, the organization I was working with when I was an executive director. So the neutral zone is that time between what was and what now will be. And it's a time of uncertainty. It's a time of chaos. It's a time of less productivity where people's self-confidence isn't what it could be. Uh, it's a time when people are unsettled and they tend to focus in on themselves, even if so many other people are going through the exact same thing at the same time. Uh, it's also a time of opportunity. It's a time where people are more willing to try new things, um, where they are prepared to look at things differently and be innovative. And so there's a lot that can be accomplished through this time, but it's also a time of struggle. And um, through the neutral zone, uh, we find people will take different lengths of time to actually feel comfortable and begin to move on to the new beginnings. A lot of that depends on their history in the, uh, with change and how they feel about change itself. It also has a lot to do with how the organization or you as their manager or leader uh, prepare them for what is happening, if it is at all possible to. Sometimes change just happens without the opportunity of, or ability to prepare people for it. But when there is that opportunity to prepare people um, and know what they can expect, uh, and be provided with information, it can definitely help them to get through this time more quickly um, and with less of an impact on the organization. So let me tell you a story about a change that I had actually undertaken as an executive director of an organization. Um, I was the CEO for 15 years and actually experienced or um, helped to take the organization through two significant changes. There was more change than that, um, but this example involves the same type of situation. Uh, early on in my career, I was um, leading the organization through a staff restructuring. And again, just toward the end of my career, I was again leading staff through the staff restructuring. Now I handled the two situations very differently and it definitely showed the, through the results. The first time of the staff restructuring, I did what was typical. Um, I worked with my leadership team and we identified what was necessary in terms of the, the change in structure and unfortunately at this time it was financially motivated. So uh, we had to make the change. Um, it was expressed to us by our funders and so we didn't have a lot of option or opportunities to do differently. And we, we undertook the research, the investigation. Uh, we were very complete, we were very thorough. And actually, I recall times through the actual transition going back to my file and just reassuring myself that we had done everything possible to make the best possible decision that we could. Now, the leadership team itself had been going through this for about six months and had been part of the planning, been part of the preparation, and we had it down to what now needed to happen and we shared that with the staff at that point in time. In not realizing what happens for staff during the time of transition, we were really quite concerned that they weren't more positive in their response because we had already moved on to new beginnings and we could see even though this um, this restructuring was financially motivated, we could see the imp positive impact that it would have on communication, on interactions, on just how we went about doing our business. Um, at the same time that this was happening, I would have staff 
coming to me and um, discussing their concerns with me, voicing some of the things they thought would not work and offering some possible solutions or options around it. Now, this is something that we should be giving our staff the opportunity to do. And I know that now. Back then, I thought it was them resisting and not being willing or open to the fact that this change needed to happen and that we had planned it through, we had given it ample opportunity and we weren't about to look at another way of doing it. I remember one staff in particular who was a team leader of one of my programs coming into me um, and she was a very thoughtful person and she was someone that had really took the time to look at what was going on in the restructuring and to offer some viable options. Now oftentimes what we get are people just complaining about what's going to be happening without really giving the options. But she had gone the extra mile and had provided me with those options. I heard her out and I very politely told her that this is just the way it was going to be and that she needed to be prepared to make the change. I really didn't listen to what she had to say um, because I had already had my mind made up that um, she was resisting the change and she was just looking for ways to not make it happen. Uh, it was within the year that she actually resigned from her position. Now, the second time that we had implemented this um, particular restructuring, I had developed a leadership team that was made up of people across the organization, representatives who were willing and wanting to be part of the change. And right from the get-go, people knew what that change was gonna look like. And the fact that we were going to be doing a res uh, restructuring, it was not financially motivated, but the fact is that we had experienced tremendous growth and we needed to look at how we were providing services to the people that we were working with. And in fact, it was motivated by our clients in saying that we need to be looking at things differently. So one of the requirements of being on the leadership team was that they had to read William Bridges book, um, which I have identified the link to below so that we would be more prepared to undertake the change in a more interactive, engaging and positive way. Now, I'm going to continue telling my story as we go forward through the other Tips Tuesdays, but I want to share with you um, the first meeting that we had with the staff. So this team had actually uh, spent significant amount of time look, looking at best practices, um, preparing what would be a rough framework of what that new structure could look like. We recognized at this point that we wanted where possible to be able to involve people in the actual planning of and implementation of the change. And so we really were looking at best practices for the structure that we were looking for and providing a rough skeleton and giving where possible the opportunity for staff to fill that in. So once we had that done and knowing that we had been communicating with the staff all the way along the things that we were doing to take a look at the structure, we had um, a large staff meeting where everyone was asked to be present um, so that we could talk with them and share with them the work that we had done and where we were at and what we could see doing going forward. So we had uh, talked to the entire uh, team, the entire organization, and all 12 of my leadership team members were there, and we shared what we were proposing. And we told them that the details were not um, finalized, and in fact, we were looking to them to be involved. And they sat there somewhat astounded. And in fact, um, needed to be convinced that we didn't have a hidden agenda or that we hadn't already made decisions around what that would look like. And we then gave them opportunity 
over the next hour to talk with one another, to talk with the, the leadership team, to ask questions, to voice their concerns, um, and to share potential ideas. And that was the beginning of the involvement of them and giving them some control over the future of what their jobs could look like and how the organization was going to reframe itself in terms of its staffing structure. Stay tuned with me and we'll continue looking at um, the change and transition model and I'll continue to share with you my example using staff restructuring. Until we meet again, remember, success is yours. Bye for now.